I want to give you the four main hindrances or obstacles to answering prayers. If you notice here, I have these four, what are they? Hurdles in front of us. And each one of these hurdles is like a runner running. I don't know if you ever ran track in high school or you've watched people and in a couple of weeks we're going to see the Olympics and, uh, and, and we're going to see people running over hurdles. And these guys, they're tough. And gals, they're tough. They're athletes. They're trained to run over hurdles. I remember I was in, in, high, in, in college, and I was really slow. I played baseball. And so the baseball coach decided to send me to the track coach to say, hey, there's no reason why this guy is so slow. Let's try to speed him up a little. And so what they did was the track coach, he had me run over hurdles. I want you to learn how to stretch your legs and go over the hurdle. And then once, you know, and I'm doing this for months now, months. Then they sent me back to the baseball coach afterwards. I was still slow, but I looked good when I ran. <laughs> <laughs> hurdles represent hindrances to prayer. And so I want us to be conscious of this now because as we, there, there are many hindrances, but the four main ones, the others are more, you know, just shoots or, or just... Just limbs, tentacles to these four main hurdles. Once you overcome these hurdles, it's like a runner. It's smooth sailing to the finish line. You are assured to have your prayers answered. God delights in answering them, and he has the capacity to answer them. James chapter 1 tells us this. Are you there? Good. Look at verse 5. James 1, verse 5. James writes, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. There we see our God is a prayer answering God. He tells us he'll, if we lack wisdom, ask him. Watch this now, verse 6. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. I want you to take a look over here at this first hurdle. This hurdle, that word, do you see what it says? What does it say? Now, doubt. Doubt is an obstacle to answer the prayers. Don't you start thinking that God's not interested in answering your prayers. He is interested. He welcomes prayers. He invites prayers. He has the capacity to answer prayers. He delights in answering our prayers. But there are times hindrances take place, and this is one of the primary hindrances to answer prayer, and it's the word doubt. Doubt speaks of uncertainty. Uncertainty about God's abilities. Uncertainty about God's willingness. Perhaps uncertainty about God's care for you. Well, I don't think he cares, so he's not going to answer. I don't think he's able, so he's not going to answer. I don't think he's willing, so he's not going to answer. And so when we formulate doubt, and doubt, by the way, it absorbs your thinking. James puts it this way. Verse 6, when he asks this man, when he prays, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. So someone who doubts when they pray to God the Father, you are like a wave blown and tossed by the winds of the sea. And so here we're recognizing that doubt is such an obstacle to answer prayer. 
And so the scripture is telling us then this doubt, this kind of thinking that creates uncertainty it, 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 and the reasoning, it just takes over and concludes that no answer will come from God. He has not heard me. He doesn't really believe, you know, the re request or honor my request. He's not concerned about me. He doesn't have the ability. And so my prayer becomes rote and mechanical. I start functioning like a robot and I pray just because, quote unquote, it's the right thing to do. And then I start speaking like the world when something tragic happens. Even atheists say, you're in my thoughts and prayers. They're not going to pray. They're not even going to think about me. But they say it because it's just a nice thing to say. And so we can't allow prayer to become, quote unquote, nice words or empty words or gibberish or mechanical words or we pray the night prayers and now I lay me down to sleep. And uh, come on, I just want you to see prayers is the dialogue that we have with God the Father. And God wants to hear his children talk to him. He welcomes us to talk to him. But doubt or uncertainty, it absorbs your whole thinking. <laughs>